Meldrum. Meldrum's Monster Garage. And uh, we're going to be working on all these little leakies on the transmission uh, all in one video here. So we're going to tack the uh, shifter linkage uh, seal right here. And we're going to attack the speedometer cable, which is right up here. And then I'm going to swing around and we're going to attack the servo seal right here and then the whole pan gasket. All right, then we'll work our way backwards uh, to the transmission seal on the drive shaft. And then we'll work our way totally backwards here to the seal on the drive shaft going into the rear differential. And then we will replace the rear differential uh, gasket and oil. So here we go. Garage and you're underneath the 1966 Chevelle crew cab and we're looking at the power glide transmission and I know it's really hard to see in this but it's hard to get an angle on this but what we're going to do I'll reach around up here is this is a speedometer cable and there's been a little drip of transmission fluid so we're going to replace the gear assembly here and the gear assembly has a couple things it has a has a little cup seal I don't know if you can see that and it also has a uh, o-ring seal so let's show you where that's at well, let me take it apart here uh, if we can uh, let's see here it's hard to do with the camera in the way but uh, hopefully the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take the cable off all right and that that simply comes right out pretty easy and you can already see a little transmission fluid there. And then I don't know if you can see this, I'm pointing at a little bolt here and that holds the, uh, the whole assembly in. Well, let me go get a uh, wrench for that. All right, I think I got a little better uh, angle on this for you. So I'm just gonna take this off, 7 16 inch uh, bolt here. Okay, and that just, uh, that just holds the whole assembly in there. See that? All right, and then this should uh, should pull out. And I might need, need to go get a pair of pliers for that. Hang on. All right, so I got a pair of pliers for that, and I'll just uh, wedge that in there and kind of pry it out of there. Yeah, that comes pretty easy. Just don't want to damage the threads there. So there you go. That's got the uh, gear assembly in it, and uh, we'll pull that out of there. And then you see the O-ring there, we'll take that off. And then uh, the cup assembly is somewhere. We'll figure it out right, in a second. So this project went a little longer than expected, but uh, what I wanted to show you was that uh, I ordered a new gear. Make sure you get the same color because there's different ratio gears uh, with different colors and uh, you wanna make sure you get the same color so your speedometer doesn't change. And uh, basically what I had to do was, uh, uh, the new ones are machined out for a cup, and this is a little cup seal. Earlier designs like this one did not have the cup seal in it, and therefore it would, uh, the oil would eventually make its way out here and leak. So, um, I uh, had to get this on my handy dandy drill press and very carefully machine that out until the cup seal would uh, fit down in here. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. All right, so the new one fits in there a lot tighter. And uh, you can see I've got the seal on this side and then we'll put it back in. And of course, uh, when we put it back in, we gotta make sure this flat right here uh, lines up with the tab in there. So let's go get it in. We're just gonna tighten that up. All right, put that in my pocket. And see if I can, there we go. All right, so there you go, all installed. Just got it uh, finger tight. And now uh, we'll start wiping all the grease up and hopefully we won't have any more oil coming out of there. All right, the next spot that leaks on these uh, power glides that we're gonna attack is the shifter linkage. And Napa makes a handy dandy tool for about nine, 10 bucks. And of course, uh, this is the seal we're gonna install. 
and uh, basically this is going to screw into the old seal it's going to ruin it and then we're going to yank it out so uh let me get the camera set up and uh, uh we'll take a take a video of that and uh, of course this will be the uh, installation tool where we can tap on it with a hammer all right let's try this out all right it's hard to hold the camera here but uh what we got here is this is the uh drop down cable which is uh hooked up to the accelerator pedal so when you floor it this uh actually will shift the linkage downshift the linkage and then this is the rest of the linkage for shifting so i'll get that off uh, of course there's no easy way to take that there's no nice little bolt on here to remove the uh, shaft so we got to take the uh, transmission pan off which is okay because then i can replace the seal and the filter and uh, clean that up but uh, we've got to remove some parts here uh, i'll try to keep up with this video but i might skip ahead all right so you need a there's a inner shaft and an outer shaft that we need to take off i know it's really hard for me to focus here but uh you got an allen key it's going to fit in there You're just gonna uh, uh, loosen it a little bit there's a nut behind there so i don't want to loosen it too much so there's one here and then there's uh one here so we'll loosen up those and then we should be able to pull the shaft out all right i tell you what all that walking around with a fancy dancy tool and I still ended up uh, prying it out of there. I think it did loosen it up though. But uh, here's the new seal. You can see we're gonna just uh, put that in there. I'm sure it'll pop out on the floor on me. Damn thing. So, okay, gotta put the hammer between my legs and I'll get the tool up in here. And hopefully you can see that, probably not. But uh, I'm going to tap it in there. There, that felt good. All right. So we got that in there, I'll clean it up a little bit more and uh, then reverse engineer this stuff back together. Whew. Right, so go. now we got everything all back together. Got this little plate on here. This little lever comes through here. So I know I've got everything lined up correctly. And I got a new transmission filter on there and we're gonna get a new gasket on there. And I got the pan all cleaned up and shined up and ready to go. All right, so we got all the uh, pan bolts and gasket lined up here. The gasket uh, holds in the uh, bolt very nicely. And then we'll tighten everything up, uh, 10 to 12 uh, foot-pounds. All right, here we go. That's enough for one night. Uh, got All I got left to do is uh, hook up the linkage here. And then we will be all set and hopefully no leakies. All right, there's one more seal left on this transmission. It goes on the side. I think it's a, got an O-ring and a seal for it. And that's gonna go right up here on the side of the transmission behind the transmission lines. Um, let's see how that goes. All right, so that piece came out fairly easy. And uh, the old O-ring was flatter than a pancake and I, I cleaned off the seal best I could and got the new gasket on there. So let's plop that up there and make sure that doesn't leak. Of course, you guys know every job is worth doing twice if you want to get it right. Or maybe that's not the right scene, but hey, we're back under the car and uh, I went ahead and put the car in reverse and I was going to take it for a test drive, backed it out, had everything all back together, no leakies, all that good stuff. And I backed it out. And of course, the neighbors are shooting like crazy today, driving me nuts. But I backed it up. And fortunately, I backed it up towards my other garage, which is on a little bit of a hill. And then I uh, went to put it in drive and I had no forward gear. And I was like, ah, shit, what the hell did I do now? Well, very, I guess, 
along with these rookie mistakes I've been making this uh, week, I've, I've really never worked on transmissions before. And uh, when I put things back together, I neglected to, this little uh, valve body here, I neglected to make sure that this pin was in the center. So make sure this is in the center and uh, you can push this back out of the way and then and then push it back in so it's centered up. And then the guide plate will keep that thing from uh, uh, moving out from the center of that pin. So remember the long, the long uh, bolt is gonna go into the valve body. Uh, the short bolt is gonna go in there. And of course, um, you got the, the shaft coming through here the uh, thin shaft come through there and it'll keep it from moving back and forth and coming off of there. So uh, a little bit of a goof up, but hey, first time I worked on a power glide um, by myself. I've torn them apart under the direction of my, my best uh, cousin buddy, Dwayne. He's had me tear them apart before, but I've really never put them back together to get them going. He's, he's, all wanted, he's always wanted parts from me because he, he rebuilds these things all the time. And I, I probably should have called him up. He would have told me right away. But I, I knew it was something simple like that. So there you go. Let's put it the way, rest of the way back together as long as I don't get shot. All right, first thing we did was uh, we've got a 10 bolt rear end here. So we've removed the bolts. I've left the top two ones in so that when I uh, crack the bottom of this and the oil starts seeping out, the, the thing won't just fall straight down. So we'll see how that works. And I just got a, a screwdriver and a hammer and I'm just gonna pop this open. I don't know, uh, yeah, it has got some oil in it. After 50 years of uh, uh, being in here, I don't, uh, by the looks of this, I don't think it's ever been changed. It's kind of grody. Um, we'll let this drip for a while. We'll get more, uh, I'll get another bucket under here because it's not covering the whole thing. All right, I've done a little bit of cleanup. As you can tell, I got crap all over my face. Um, but, uh, just looking at the gears as I rotate, uh, this assembly around, um, all the spider gears look good. The rear differential looks good. No chips. No excessive wear. Everything looks uh, mighty fine. Of course, this is a uh, open uh, rear end, not a posi. If uh, we could turn it into a posi by just uh, welding up these spider gears, and we've done that on demolition derby cars, but uh, we're not gonna do that on the Chevelle. Uh, and then of course, uh, got a Felpro gasket that we're gonna put on here. Uh, for the t uh, t 10 volt, 10 volt RDS 55028-1. Okay, so that's the gasket we're going to put on there. 10 bolts all the way around. Thus, the 10 bolt rear inch, uh, rear end, 8.2 inches. And then uh, um, I have a set of AMK uh, bolts to go on here. This is for 12 bolt. Don't tell anybody. So I'll have two extra bolts left over but they're the same exact bolts and uh, that, that'll uh, work up nicely. So I don't have to clean up the old bolts. Um, anyway, I, uh, I got the uh, cover, um, I cleaned that up inside and out and I squirted a little uh, steel paint, steel looking paint on there. And like you say, I've been scrubbing around here on another side, but uh, not too much. I wanna have that nice patina. Maybe I'll spray a little rust color back on the differential. <laughs> I don't, nah, I don't know. Um, okay, so we'll uh, get this gasket up on there. We'll we'll smear a little uh, RTV on there just to our, our uh, what should I say? Uh, per permatex, put a little permatex on here just to keep it in place and make sure that it seals up because it is kind of kind of rough on the casting here. So. Let's keep going. All right, there you go. Got it back on. And uh, it's tightened down to 25 uh, foot-pounds on all the bolts there per GM spec. And painted a real pretty silver, steel silver there. And uh, now I'm gonna go around to the other side, take the rear diff, or uh, the uh, take the uh, drive shaft out of the rear diff and change that seal. 
because I think that one is really leaking. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is uh, loosen up these uh, strap bolts here. It's kind of unique on 66. They made them a lot stronger as the years went on, but uh, I got my little custom tool in here to keep the drive shaft from turning. This piece of tube flattened out and stuck in there, and then we can uh, loosen these up. All right, so I did a little cleanup work on this and uh, got a little penetrating oil in there. These, these nuts are really tough to get off. We're gonna use the uh, impact wrench. And I've went ahead and marked all of this so that when I put it back together, it all kind of lines back up. So this is gonna come off, it's on a spline, but the nut has a preset uh, torque on it, which is holding the whole differential uh, right where it needs to be on torque. So uh, just to get it close again, uh, I don't know what the torque would be and I'm not gonna do a breakaway torque here. So uh, just to get it close, we're gonna put lines here to line it back up. All right, so I got the uh, nut off and now we gotta pull this off the spline. And of course it, it wants to rotate. So I've got, a, can see a gear puller on there and uh, we will try to get this off of here. Um, one thing I did notice when I was, uh, I never saw that hole in the muffler, so I eh, guess we need a new muffler. But I think I got one in stock. All right, so that worked pretty good. And now we can see the seal that we're after and uh, we will knock that out of there. And uh, you can see, uh, here we got this. We'll get this cleaned up a little bit too and uh, we'll get a new seal on there and we will be all set to go. Another one of Mel Drums Monster Garage, great leaky rear end videos. I think this is the third one I've done. I think I got some cool jokes, see if I have those in stock. Hey Mark, I'm having a tag sale today, but I hear you're working on your leaky rear end. I got just what you need for a leaky rear end at my tag sale, come see me. Have a great day. All right, so I got the new seal on there and then I got I got a big old fitting that I uh, put around the outer edge here and then take the hammer and just tap it in. So uh, it's got a nice new lip seal in there and uh, we'll go ahead and uh, put the next piece on. Hi, Mark. I heard that you were working on your leaky rear end. I got just the things for you. First of all, you're gonna need some of this. Second of all, this always works for me. And by the way, leaky rear ends it can be stinky, so you might need some of this. Bye bye. All right, so I'm just about tight. I've got it all the way bottomed out, and I don't know if you can see you can see the mark here and here, and uh, we got to get that to line up so we got the right preload or the same preload approximately that we had when we took it apart. Hey Mark, I heard through the grapevine that you're having trouble with a leaky rear end. I think maybe you let somebody ring your pinion one too many times, or maybe you just need a new pinion seal. Either way, don't forget the Permatex and the Loctite. That's right, and a new gasket. If you use a new gasket, Permatex, and Loctite, I guarantee nobody will ever ring your pinion again. Good luck. Hey, there you go. So you know what a pain it is to try to get one of these bottles in the differential. It, uh, it just wants to go all, all over the place. It's hard to squeeze in here. And uh, hey, I got something new to show you. So hang on, we'll wait till you see this. All right, so now we got to fill this back up got this back uh, tightened to where it needs to be and we're gonna fill this back up got the uh, it's like a pipe plug in here um, and I'm trying these uh, this new bag out uh, I've got some 75w 90 oil and these have all it's always been a bear to get the oil in here because the bottle just doesn't want to fit in there so now they got these bags and I simply uh, you know squeeze it in so uh, We'll see how this goes. Kind of like uh, cake. <laughs> 
Just squeezing it in there. And hopefully it won't make a giant mess like this usually does make. Empties out uh, pretty darn quick. All right. So I did get a, a few bags of this. I'm not sure exactly how much it'll take, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your finger and uh, stick it in here. And uh, you want the oil level right at the uh, bottom of this fitting okay so I'll keep going on this all right there you go so this is a pipe fitting uh, I don't use any sealant on it it's a metal to metal so uh, there's this isn't under pressure so uh, you just give uh, uh, one agadaga maybe two agadagas to get that uh, on there and you shouldn't have any more problems with a leaky rear end. Mark Meldrum, Meldrum's Monster Garage. Hope you enjoyed this. Get all those seals fixed. I mean, some of these seals I fixed this on this car was uh, 50 years old, and now we're back to new. They they'll won't leak anything on my garage floor, and we'll be in good shape. So once again, like, subscribe. Thank you. We're almost to a thousand. See ya. I tell you something fun to look at. Uh, these drive shafts, uh, some of them were made right here in uh, Parma, Ohio. And Larry and uh, Jim Petrello and Gary Webb from our club, they all worked at this manufacturing facility uh, when they did make uh, these uh, drive shafts. Uh, right now, current date, that plant is still in operation. They stamp out uh, all sorts of sheet metal products from doors to floor pans to everything. But uh, one thing they did was uh, they would paint stripes on the uh, drive shaft to indicate different things. And I was, I was trying to figure out the colors on this. If I had to guess, it was like, it looks like yellow, orange, orange. I'm not, it's kind of hard to see. But uh, basically after the drive shaft got balanced, uh, while the thing was still rotating, they just took a, a little uh, paintbrush and they painted these stripes on. And I think the, the first two indicated something. I'll look it up for you. I think the uh, third one indicated what shift it was. And uh, Larry actually uh, was a machine repairman and uh, he would uh, work on the machine that uh, actually did this balancing every once in a while. So yeah, it's some interesting facts. It's real hard to see on this, but uh, Right about here is where you can see the best color. All right, so the uh, uh, front here, I think uh, the previous owner had already replaced this, so I don't have to worry about that, but that's another seal uh, that you might do underneath the, uh, uh, on the drive shaft and the transmission. All right, that's it, Mark Meldrum, see ya.